So our last topic in this section is going to be plate buckling. And kind of a disclaimer up front, um, you could spend a whole semester talking about buckling of plates, and in particular buckling of composite plates. It gets uh, pretty complicated. And when you have kind of a general laminate involved, particularly a non-symmetric one, then it becomes uh, even more difficult. So we're going to look at a specific case here. Um, our laminate is going to be what we call specially orthotropic. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit more, but we, we mentioned it in the uh, last video. We said what uh, particular it's going to be symmetric and balanced, and those D16 and D26 bend twist coupling terms are going to be zero as well. And this plate's going to have simply supported edges all around, and it's going to be subjected to an axial loading only. So, a little bit of difference between column and plate buckling. So in mechanics and material, you looked at column buckling, and you found that the deflection was uh, a function of the coordinate x along the length of the uh, column. And if it was simply supported, like kind of indicated here, the uh, buckling shape actually was a half of a sine wave. And different end conditions would give you a little bit different shapes there. But a plate, the deflection is going to be a function of both x and y position within the plate. And uh, so here's our, uh, again, n sub x uh, with the uh, bar over it. It's going to be the buckling load. And again, it's going to be applied axially along the uh, width of this and simply supported all around. So when we said specially ortho orthotropic, uh, it means that the B matrix is completely zero. A16 and uh, A26 are going to be zero, which makes it balanced. But also the D16 and D26, as we mentioned earlier. Now if you go back to page 9 of the uh, class note course packs, uh, you'll see that you know when we had a plus and minus 30, we were able to get those numbers smaller and smaller if we used more thin layers so that they approach zero. But if you have only zeros and 90s, then that would, uh, as long as you're symmetric, then that would uh, qualify as a specially orthotropic laminate. We're going to keep it real simple. We're going to have all our fibers in uh, just the axial direction. Now before we get to that, Here's the governing equation, and you can tell it looks pretty complicated here. Uh, but all the D terms, the bending stiffness terms, are involved. Uh, w is simply the displacement in the out of plane or the Z direction. Uh, N sub X bar, that's going to be the compressive buckling load. Now, we, we, um, in this formulation, it shows as a positive value, even though it's a compressive load. And remember our initial notation, those commas means derivatives. So it's D11 times the fourth derivative of displacement with respect to x. And you can see in the middle we've got a partial derivative, and n sub x has the uh, uh, second derivative with respect to x. So again, pretty complicated um, differential equation. But the solution uh, to this equation is not terribly complicated. You can see that there are two sine uh, term. Well, there's one term here that involves uh, sine functions. Um, and uh, C there is just some constant. You remember when you find the buckling load uh, of a column, you don't know exactly what the deflection is because uh, when that buckling load is reached, the deflection uh, can can um, increase without any additional load. So same kind of thing here. So the constant really is, is not important. M and N are integers. Uh, A is the width and B is the length. So if we solve that for the buckling load, um, this is what it comes out to be, uh, N sub X. And you can see again all the uh, bending stiffness terms are there. And again those integers m and n. But one thing you notice out of this is that n only appears in the numerator here and here, but m is in the numerator and in the denominator. So you can say for sure that n has to equal 1 to get to the critical value, the smallest value of n sub x, but you're not sure about m. So you have to try different values of m. So we put in here, uh, this is just that same equation with uh, n equals 1. And again, depends on not the properties of the material, but also the dimensions of the plate as to what the uh, value of m is going to be. 
So what M and N mean here, and again, we're simply supported all the way around, so the deflection is going to be zero at all the edges. And N is the number of half sine waves across the width. And again, for simply supported case, we know that's going to be equal to 1. But depending on the length of the um, uh, plate here, M could be um, any, well, in, any number of uh, half sine waves but it has to be an integer because you have to end up at zero on, uh, on the edges. So here's our example. We're going to use a quarter inch um, carbon epoxy. All the fibers are in the zero direction. Try to keep that simple. Uh, the length of it is uh, four feet and the width of it is one foot twelve inches. So we can use our um, general laminate spreadsheet to find the bending stiffness terms which are all in pounds per inch as shown here. And now we can plug that into the equation we have and we start out by trying m equals 1. So again uh, 1 wherever you have uh, uh, m we put in here d11, d12, d66, and d22 and our answer comes out to be 2170 pounds per inch. Is that the buckling load? We're not sure yet. We've got to try the other values of m. And so we plug into m equals 2. Again, the only difference is this one becomes a 2, this one becomes a 2. And you see, yeah, we have a much smaller uh, buckling load. So obviously the lowest one is, is the one at which it's going to buckle. So it's the critical load that we're looking for. Uh, is that the critical one? We won't know until we try the next value, m equals 3. And now we can see that n sub x is going back up. So yeah, m equals 2 is the uh, corresponds to the critical buckling load. And so 1,220 pounds per inch would be uh, our solution there. Now if we kind of plot this for different lengths, keeping that width of 12 inches uh, consistent and again the same design all the way across, Here's where we calculated at uh, 1,220 pounds. And you can see up above that, this is the uh, for m equals 3, it was more than that. We also calculated for m equals 1, it was up here. And if we had tried 4 and 5, so again, once we find the smallest one um, and it starts going back up, we know we can quit. If, uh, for example, if um, when we get to about 34 inches, that's where the buckle, buckled shape changes. So prior to, for shorter than 34 inches, we have uh, m equals 1. Greater than 34 inches, it switches over to m equals 2, which is what we have right here. And you can see if we go on to a length of about 60 inches, then the critical uh, shape would go from 2 half sine waves to 3. Now let's look at one variation. We've talked about this before with bending, is that uh, adding uh, a core is uh, very efficient for bending and of course for this buckling problem um, the bending terms are what's important here. So adding a half inch of foam and still keeping our carbon epoxy at a quarter inch but now distributed an eighth of an inch top and the bottom above this half inch of foam. Our lam laminate bending stiffness terms um, if you compare them to what we had before, they're way up, uh, almost almost 20 times greater. And again, that's done at a pretty low cost by adding the foam material. It actually doesn't add much weight either. So again, the principle is just like that of a wide flange beam. You want to move the stuff as far away from the neutral axis, or in this case the mid, uh, mid thickness, as much as possible. So if you plug into your equations for that, once again you'll find that m equals 2 is the uh, critical uh, value, the critical shape, and that the critical load then is 23,000 uh, pounds per inch. So again, comparing that without the foam core, you see almost a 20 times improvement of, of the buckling resistance. So you can see why we emphasize uh, sandwich structures in a lot of uh, applications where it's bending critical or buckling critical adding that doesn't cost much, doesn't add much weight as long as you have the room to do it. And so this would usually be where I would tell you what's going to be on the next video, but there is no next video, so that's it.